Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series. I'm going to be starting on the channel called Game Dev Studio. This game this is made by a solo developer, and he um, has worked quite hard on the game. I think it's, it's a really fun game. Played it for quite a quite a few hours now, and I think you guys might enjoy it as well. So, well, well, we can do the tutorials, but I think we should just go straight into free play. So, I know exactly how I want to play this game. To turn that off. Let's, hold on. And checking this box will make you start out with just your player and character having extra employees. It is a snare. Okay, so we're going to go to the introduction. We're going to start in the regular year. We'll just start at that and we'll go to the regular difficulty. And we will, I suppose, let's just start the game. Be a male character. Let's, let's just randomize it once. There we go. That'll do. Um, Silver tongue usually is a pretty good one. Let's get our interests. Well, you always want public speaking because that's very useful for the conventions when advertising your game. Mm. So I'm taking interest in some it painful is so pretty useful military. I think though I'm going to go with medieval fighting. Actually no. Contributes to government fighting games, military, sci-fi, spy. And that goes to medieval. And that goes to wilderness. Is there any going to um fantasy? It's no fantasy. So I suppose let's just go with photography. Uh, yeah, let's go for ph photography. Hey, Potter. You wanna be in the video, Potter? Put him be my cat. He's jumping up. Come on, mate. Ah, now you're stuck. Uh oh. Uh oh. Potter's stuck. There you go. So I've got that stuff sorted out. Now I, I, well you usually, I usually put most of my points into intelligence, then put about five or six into vision, and then a couple into speed charismas. Not too useful for me, because um, I would prefer going for a manager instead of my character being a manager. So I'll do it like that, and let's get into it. Alright, so we have to make a studio name. Now, I'm just trying to think. Hmm. <coughs> let's go. Let's go with Matchbox. Matchbox stu Studios. That's, a, that's spelled wrong. Studios. There we go. Pineapple was taking policy decisions, which made a lot of gamers happy. The platform increased popularity of the platform expected. So we start off with 400k, and instantly it's night time. We could buy it in one of these other places, but it's very expensive to do so. So we're just going to start off just just putting a workspace in. 
and we also need to build a toilet and I reckon let's put, let's put some floors in there so yeah this game is a it's like it's a it's a slight uh, it's a bit like um, game dev tycoon in a way in a way it's, it's hardly it's hardly like it but it has the same theme same kind of theme of course but yeah so that's all warning because we don't have any doors going into it and we don't have a light so I know what I'm doing for this game, so I'll probably zoom for it pretty quickly. But, I hope you guys enjoy this episode, and if you do, make sure you like this and subscribe. If you're new, and let me know if you want more of this game, because I would love to put more out. Which I will put about, like, five episodes out, most likely. But So we'll also want to get some bookshelves. Start off with just a couple. Because we've got no employees, so we don't actually need any of the space. And what we're going to put in the bookshelves is these books. These books will help um help them get XP for those um the areas that the books are burned. So it's going to get quite a bit of extra XP. We just don't have concept or management, which is all right for now. We don't need we don't necessarily need management. A concept is probably needed. Alright. So he's here. Got his nice computer in 1988. Got 300k and we've lost quite a bit of just building an office expansion. So first off we're going to have to start with making a game engine. We could wait a bit and get some technology, but I think we're going to go straight into making one. So, anyways, we have to make one before we can make a game. Or we can actually buy one. Yeah, we could buy one. Do we buy one? I'm gonna say no. No. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna buy one. We're just gonna buy this engine. It's got... It's got platform support as well, so we can make stuff for extra platforms. It's quite useful. And does it have everything that we can put in ours? Does it have a dynamic music system? Which one does it? What one? Does it... This one has a dynamic music system, and this one... Doesn't. There's 10,000. So let's play this one. So we've got that game engine now, so we don't we can just get straight into making a game. So let's let's make a fantasy game, a fantasy adventure game for the game bootleg engine. Let's make it 9.99. We're gonna use Studio Team. Can only make it for the PC right now. Cause that's the only license we own. Make it a teenage game. Let's go third person. Linear story, just for your start. In depth fact stories. And multiple endings. Have a conversation in this um, system. Partially voiced characters. Alright, yeah, partially voiced we do. Basic world design. You can save it, you can have different difficulties. You can have sword fighting, martial arts, freedom of movement, have realistic graphics and we'll have all the bits and bobs down there. And what should we name it? I could name it something really basic like fantasy adventures but that wouldn't be very interesting would it? So let's um. Um, fantasy warfare. It doesn't really make too much sense because it's not an action game, but I think that will do. So let's start development. 
and you'll start working on that. Now you'll notice every time I go into this, these skills will go up by a bit because he's learning that, so that went to from 23 to 24. And as he levels up, we'll get more attribute points, so we can put more points into into intelligence and speed and vision and all that. And his knowledge will slowly increase on these as we do do stuff that requires that. So we'll just wait for them to do that. And I'll show you around. So got the project section which is where you do your games of course. You you make your engines, you sell engines, you research and in the this section you can make your own platform and you can see all the other platforms. In this section you can expand your office as I just did before. You can assign your employees to different spaces if they're not assigned. And you can also look at your arrivals. So like these are other game companies. And they live in these buildings here. They own these three. Which I think is really cool. Well, you, and you can buy them out and get those buildings usually. So if I try to expand you can see how I can buy that. But I can't buy that because it's these other companies buildings. Okay. So now we've got an, we've got an attribute point, so let's put that towards intelligence. And we've got the employee section, you can hire employees. There's 14 available employees, but these get they get very expensive, so it's best to go for the lower ones. But they will increase in in price as they level up and so on. You can search for jobs specifically, so if you really want this guy to have public speaking and martial arts and then be a artist, you can do that. But it's very it's harder to do it with a lower um or price range. Office preferences, so you can auto-approve raise requests from employees. The vacation request from employees. They will spend the attribute points that everyone gets by itself. Um, you can have team building activities, which will be s such as, um, if you look in here, like bowling and all that, and it will give them a bit of a, um, a bit of a better um, knowledge in the certain things, so we just did that. Got a slightly better knowledge in firearms, but that's what that does. And you can have all these um other ones which are kind of self-explanatory in a way. But um the practice will practice their skills and all that. Now down here, you've got the project info, you show quality and like well design, sound and such and so on. You've got the bugs and you've got the interest. Which is that, so this will stay permanently this way. This can go away slowly. It's going from me from advertising. Obviously, the platforms that the system is that that game is on, and game reviews, which is like from the um review companies. You got game scale and all that crap. Then you've got advertising, which we can't do yet because we no one knows it. it's even a thing yet got game conventions which will slowly expand as we go along. QA, quality insurance. Insurance, um that's gonna be like to find all the bugs. Stuff like that. We've got another attribute point. Let's spend that on vision. So we've got publishers, which I've actually never been able to use because I never wanted to publish one of my games before. And then you've got you can test your own project to find the bugs yourself. You can change the price, change the name, and scrap it. Although we won't be doing any of that. So that's pretty much the basics. I've been talking a lot, so I'm going to talk about these now. But and then you've got finance report, all that stuff, which is just normal. Since we're coming into um, the polishing phase, actually, we're just going to be smoothing out all of this, um, all of the issues and stuff. So, because we won't be able to generate any more bugs, we could do quality assurance. Which 
actually did find quite a few bugs. Let's do it one more time just to be sure. Yep, there's no bugs, so I kind of wasted that. We can extend the work period if we really want to. I think we'll do just just once. Just give us a bit more to do and increase everything else. Like that. I think we'll also schedule a game convention for the next year. So we say uh, there we go. Let's schedule this game convention. And in 11 months, we will show off the game. So, they release a new engine. It's an update to the previous engine. The racing rail support, which is new technology. It's all good. So, game boom conventions in 9 months. How long have we been working on this one? We've been working on Fantasy Warfare for 2.4 years. Let's hope this does well. Now this game is pretty cheap, it's, well, for me, which is a New Zealand price, it's about, I think it's $14, which is pretty cheap, and it's a really, it's a really good game. I have this um, guy out, go on, buy the game if you really feel like it, so I, reckon, I really highly recommend it, it's a really good game. You can get many hours out of it. Into the game convention. Two months. We need to we need to fix these bugs fast because otherwise people are not going to think it's a good game because of all the bugs. And I don't think we're actually going to get to that. Nah, not oh, there. He goes. They thought it was not bad, which is it's decent. So now they know it exists. So we need to we can try and invite these dudes so we can. So, so one of them wants to see it, two of them want, two of the people, IGM is here, can be a fun experience, making a fantasy adventure game, which is definitely an interesting combination, we think it will be great fun, when it will be released, you'll soon find out, and it will be a fun ride, there's no hands on, so we can't, we can't actually, we can't actually give them uh, a playthrough of the game, we're, we're working on world design. It'll be really soon. I think it'll be great fun. It'll be a fun ride. So we've got five percent left until it's been released. And I just want them to iron out those bugs, really. See how well it did. That was alright for our first game. It's only a scale of one as well, so we can work on that. So he's working on those bugs now, and let's release it. And because it's got a trend boost, look at that, we've already made 34k. So we're slowly making more money. And it's now the sales are dropping. So. I suppose let's work on... Actually, we might want to get a new engine. Okay. Okay, so, let's have a look at this stuff. We could research this, which I think we're going to just research it for now. Just so we got it. Well, that's selling. It's made 56k. It's pretty good. So, 9,000 people bought it. 10,000 people bought it. That's a big milestone. So, that's awesome. We got a bunch of money from that. Because I want to make these videos a bit shorter and a bit my 20 minutes or so. We'll be ending off this episode on this this game, and we have made profit now. We are in profit margins. Over anything over 400k is profit. So we've researched everything we could research. So I think now we should. Hmm, we could buy this engine by the new engine which I think we will do you know I think we're going to make our own one now alright so let's make our own engine let's call it the match box 
1.0. Expect Click Studio to do it. At least add both of those in. Pervertic sliding. Let's put dual channel system in. Put all of this off. Now we need to upgrade the computers. So we've got we can upgrade all the computers to the level three now. So let's do that. There we go. So let's finish all that up. So that game is just it just gone off the market then. That's good. We got four hundred twelve thousand dollars, which is a lot of money added to our thing. So it's good, and he's got quite a bit of experience now. So we can make better games. So we're going to end this off here, guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed this first episode of Game Dev Studio. And I, I'll see you all in the next one. So have a good day, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.